Hello and welcome to Study IQ English. Welcome to today's current affairs video, a short bulletin video where we shall talk about a unique climatic phenomenon. The ocean water is turning red. Yes, blood red in appearance. A day might come within a few decades when a majority of ocean water may actually change its color. Now, once again, the West Asian region has come to limelight. For the last few years, West Asia was infamous owing to the war that is going on between Israel and Palestine and later Israel and Iran. Today, once again, the same geographical area is under scanner. It is making big news, but for climate change and its deadly impact. We are referring to the Sea of Galilee. This, whether you call it the Sea of Galilee or whether you call it Lake Tiberias or you choose to call it Kinneret, this happens to be a lake situated in northern Israel as you can see in the map here. Now, this also happens to be very strategically situated between Israeli-occupied Golan Heights and the Galilee region. When we talk about Golan Heights, we know that it has been in the news majorly in the last few years. Often when we talk about the geo political history of the area, we see that this Golan Heights happens to be the region that is situated in an important plateau region of the Middle East. This is located in southwest Syria, between Syria and Israel border. Why is it so famous? It's well known because long back in 1967, during the famous Six-Day War, Israel had occupied this from Syria. And since then, it has been consistently in the news. Apart from perhaps US, no other country readily acknowledges the Golan Heights as an Israeli territory. Well, that's about the geopolitical fact. Now, coming back to the current topic at hand. This area once again has made news because this Sea of Galilee has actually been changing color in the last few days. The color today has become crimson red. That is a very deep shade of red. Initially, it was viewed with fear, just like an apocalyptic phenomena. The local residents of the region were extremely concerned. They thought that it is coming like a pre-warning to perhaps a bigger ecological problem like a tsunami or some other dreaded weather phenomena. Let's understand that this lake being situated in such an important location also is very, very famous because this is also the largest freshwater lake in Israel and it is also the lowest freshwater lake on earth. Having said that, it also is probably the second lowest lake in the earth right after the Dead Sea. So why does the, this topic then become important? Of course, it's important because we are talking about GS Paper 3 UPSC mains here. We know that in the GS Paper 3, there is a topic known as conservation and environment degradation. Within that, we also talk about the environmental impact assessment. So therefore, this topic is crucial from the perspective of global warming climate change. We often see forest fires to earthquakes in the news. Right yesterday, Turkey was once again hit by a massive earthquake of 6 point something measurement on the Richter scale. But the ocean water itself changing color happens to be a phenomena which shows that marine pollution and marine water toxicity is now reaching a record height. So why scientifically will the ocean water change its color and what does it mean in the times to come? Let's understand that this phenomena can be attributed to a phenomena referred to as the algae bloom. Now, when in a given water body, there is too much growth of algae as an organism, the water slowly, slowly starts changing color. Sometimes this phenomena is referred to as a massive or a dangerous algae bloom. Under this phenomena, the green algae starts spreading and it covers the entire water with its presence, leading to this strong pigment accumulation which makes the water look red. 
the particular algae we are referring to with context to the Sea of Galilee happens to be the BB algae referred to as the Botryococcus brownie. This is the algae which has actually changed the ocean water from bluish green into red in the presence of sunlight with the reaction that happens. Now, if this happens to take place very often, it could mean dangerous consequences for the marine life. Why? Because with too much algae deposition on the water surface, there is barely any oxygen that reaches down in the water. So, the immediate result is that the marine life suffers. The marine, marine plant and animals, they start dying because of poor oxygen availability. That's the major problem. With that, we also see that naturally because the temperatures across the globe have been rising. We are experiencing a hotter summer every year. Owing to that, algae gets the perfect condition to develop and to breed in the ocean water. Because when ocean water experiences a high amount of nitrogen and phosphorus, it acts like a feeding. It acts like a breeding ground for algae. This leads to exponential algae growth, too much algae growth within a short period. As you can see on the, in the picture here, large marine animals like sharks, whales, various kind of fish are also therefore under threat now. This typically, as I said, as the algae decomposes with time, it also stops the oxygen level and sunlight from reaching the lower layers of the seawater. So therefore, what happens? Due to climate change, the marine life ultimately starts suffering. Now, let's understand that this phenomena of algae bloom is not only associated with marine water or the breakish water. It's also very, very common in freshwater bodies. For example, if we just look at so many different kind of algae. Some are known to bloom in the seawater, but some of them actually start covering the freshwater bodies like lakes, ponds, rivers and other wetlands. So, talking about algae bloom, getting a question in UPSC, mains exam about algae bloom as a consequence of high temperatures and global warming, we can define algae bloom as an excessive overgrowth of algae in any water body. That eventually leads to its color being changed. Now, algae are photosynthetic organisms. This simply means that they use the photo energy or the sun's energy to produce their own nourishment, to produce their own reasons for further breeding. And they are therefore sometimes so intrinsic, such natural part of the water ecosystem that it's difficult to eliminate them also. So, algae blooms, as I said, can happen both in the sea water, in the salty water. It can happen in the fresh water as well. Now, one of the very dangerous algae responsible for the algae bloom is the cyanobacteria. Apart from that, there are so many other algae, such as the diatoms or the dinoflagellates, which are responsible for causing different kind of algae blooms within fresh water. So, we see that various kinds of algae today, their overgrowth ultimately mean harmful effect on human life, harmful effect on the marine animals, harmful effect on fish. Let's remember that fisheries are also a very important component of food for many countries, many human communities. But with this kind of a phenomenon, it's difficult for people to even use and access seafood, which also endangers food security in the long run. So, Sometimes scientists say that although algae bloom may not be very harmful directly to human life, but there are certain kind of toxic or harmful algae blooms, which can in fact cause debilitating or dangerous infections among humans. And hence, humans are advised to stay away from water bodies, which are witnessing a color change phenomena. So the panic that's been spreading in the region of Israel right now is justified because there is more investigation and scientific research going on to prove the exact nature of the algae, whether it's the freshwater cyanobacteria, which is also called the blue-green algae, or whether it is caused by any other kind of diatom or some typical common seawater algae. So with this, let's quickly talk about a question from UPSC Prelims 2011. The question says, 
there is a concern over the increase in harmful algae blooms in the sea waters of India. What could be the reason or the causative factor for this phenomena? You have three options here. One says discharge of nutrients from the estuaries. Second is runoff from the land during monsoon. A runoff means simply transferring or gushing in of water from the nearby lands into the sea during the heavy rain season. And the last is upwelling in the seas, which means an overall increase in the amount of seawater that is again a part of global warming as a part of glacial ice melting. So please select the right answer. You could definitely share your response in the comment box below. You could also discuss how helpful was the video for you. If you find any other UPSC mains question on the same topic, you can discuss it here. Or if you want, we can also discuss it in another session just to give you the tips of how to use this topic into an effective writing, answer writing session and answer writing format from the perspective of GS Paper 3. As of now, thank you so much. Please like, share and subscribe to Study IQ English and stay connected.